radioactivity. Just the sound of the word can strike fear in the hearts of people. Why? Because radioactivity is deadly and dangerous, right? Well, it can be, but it can also be incredibly useful. Let me show you what radioactivity is, how it was discovered, and how it's detected. In 1896, this fairly hairy fellow here named Henri Becquerel discovered that if you take uranium and put it on top of protected photographic film, that when you develop the film, that the film will have been exposed even though it had been protected. And Becquerel reasoned that there must be something coming off the rock that's able to go through the paper and be absorbed by the film. This is called radioactivity. So one of the basic ways of discovering radioactivity is by seeing whether a material can expose protected photographic film. This is what the rock looks like. This is what the exposure looks like on film, even though the film had been protected in paper covering. Now, some people think that this is how Henri Becquerel really discovered radioactivity. After a while, when you've got an arm growing out of the top of your head, wearing hats becomes a little bit problematic. In 1898, Marie and Pierre Curie discovered radium and polonium, which are far more radioactive than uranium is. In fact, it has so much radioactivity that it will give its energy to materials that fluoresce or phosphoresce, materials that will glow when energy is added. Now, here's the difference. Fluorescent means that as long as energy is applied, it glows, like a fluorescent light bulb. When you turn it on, it glows. When you turn it off, it stops glowing. Phosphorescent continues to glow long after you've taken away the source of energy. For example, the glow-in-the-dark stars you might have on the walls of your house, or the glow-in-the-dark dials on a watch. Now, back in the day, they didn't have this nice electric backlighting to watches. So what they did with this radio when they discovered it was they actually mixed some of the radium in with glow-in-the-dark paint. And they painted it onto clock dials and to watch dials. So when you looked at your watch, it would always be glowing, even if it hadn't seen exposure to light in days, because the radium, the radioactive radium, constantly put energy into the glow-in-the-dark material, making it glow-in-the-dark all the time. Now, some people think that radioactive materials glow in the dark themselves, but in fact, what they do is they cause materials that would glow in the dark to glow in the dark because they're acting as a source of energy. This guy right here, Ernest Rutherford, is one of the pioneers in the discovery of atomic structure. He discovered the alpha particle, and he was able to take this alpha particle and shoot it at all kinds of things. He shot it at gold foil and to see what atoms were made of. He shot them at other elements to see what would happen. They turn into different elements. We're going to get to that later. And working with Hans Geiger, they were able to develop a Geiger counter. Now, this Geiger counter detects the presence of radioactivity by using the fact that radioactive particles tend to be charged, and they'll give a charge to whatever air or gas they might come into contact with. So we have a tube filled with a noble gas, argon. The radioactive material gives off its radioactivity, which is charged. The charged particles enter the argon gas and give the argon gas a charge. We have a electrode that goes through here, and when enough charge is built up in here, it creates a spark, which is detected by the amplifier and counter, and you can hear it as a click. Geiger counters all will go click, 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 we got some radioactive stuff in us. Does that make us dangerous? Well, we're human beings, so we're pretty dangerous anyway, right? This is a Geiger counter. This is where the gas is stored, and this is where you let the radioactivity in through. The charge goes back through a wire. It's battery powered. The detector reads out in a gauge right over here. You can also have digital versions of this. Now, the reason why some atoms are radioactive and give off particles and some don't is very similar to the reason why some people throw up and others don't. Generally, you're going to throw up if you've just stuffed your stomach full of too much stuff. For example, if you eat a whole pizza and you're feeling a little rumbly in your tummy. Your tummy's not feeling very good. You're a bit unstable. So what do you do? <clears throat> you become more stable by burping out stuff. 
I feel so much better now. Radioactivity is basically atomic vomit. It's what an atom belches out to make it more stable. Well, what, how do you know if an atom is stable or unstable in the first place? There's what's called the zone of stability. Small atoms tend to prefer a one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons. In other words, if there's 10 protons, 10 neutrons in addition, it's going to give you a stable atom. But as the atom gets larger, the zone of stability tilts more in favor of the neutrons, the extra neutrons to keep the protons from repelling each other too much. So the band of stability starts to tend more toward the neutron, a 1.2 to 1 ratio of neutrons to protons, to a 1.4 to 1 ratio of neutrons to protons. If you're above the zone of stability, you have too many neutrons, so you have to do something to get rid of those neutrons. Now, you might think it would just be easy for the atom to say, okay, let's get rid of some neutrons. But actually, neutron decay is incredibly rare. It has to undergo a different type of decay. Similarly, if you're under the zone of stability, you have too many protons. Now, again, wouldn't it be simple for the atom just to belch out protons? Maybe, but that's not what it does. It undergoes a different kind of decay. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where the nucleus is so huge that it's just going to fall apart, no matter what its ratio of protons to neutrons are. Once you get to element 84, polonium, from 84 on up, every single isotope, no matter what it is, is radioactive. From element 94 on up, all isotopes are radioactive. From element 83 on down, pretty much every element has at least one non-radioactive isotope.